Good morning, dear friends. I wanted to come to you briefly this morning to bring you some announcements and a devotion for your Palm Sunday observance. Been some really good things happening here at our church in spite of the fact that we're still at a distance and separated from one another. In terms of communication, a new member call ministry is being implemented this week. We now have, thanks to our new phone system, remote access to voicemails, and our folks and staff are beginning to use Zoom for their meetings and communications. I regret to tell you that we are going to be closed to meetings and worship services here in our facilities at least through April at this point. But I do want to thank you for your faithful and generous support and utilizing the vehicles to continue sending your tithes and your offerings. They are much appreciated and very needed. For today, I want to share with you from the 21st chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go to the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there and with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. Let us pray. Holy God, as we remember your son's triumphal entry into Jerusalem, we confess that all too often we have been part of the crowd. When things go our way, we believe, and our lives are good because we worked hard, and when things do not go our way, we can sometimes blame others for our troubles. God, help us to take responsibility not only for our own lives, but for the lives of our neighbors. Guide us in ways that we might live out your commandments more fully in our lives. Help us to seek Christ in the suffering of this world. And guide us as the body of Christ to be his hands and feet. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I remember going to church as a young boy on Palm Sunday. My goodness, we would come down the center aisle all waving the palms in a processional hymn, which always was all glory, laud, and honor. The azaleas were blooming there in Savannah and everyone was dressed well. The men were in their coats and ties and women were in their dresses and their gloves and their hats. Boy, our world has changed since then. And we are changing now, especially now. But our text from Matthew has not, and I still struggle with it. Did Jesus ride on both animals? Yes, but not at the same time. Why the choice of these wonderful animals? Jesus did so perhaps for three reasons. The first was fulfillment of the prophecy from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice, O greatly. O daughter of Zion, shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, and even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Another reason why I believe Jesus chose these beasts is that in the ancient world, a leader who rode in on a horse was coming in for war, and Jesus was clearly coming offering peace on this simple beast of burden. I think a third reason why is that Jesus wanted to connect with his people. His choice of a donkey instead of a horse was God's way of saying, he came as a king to save and to serve and not to dominate. We can see that Matthew is simply including both animals as prophesied in Zechariah. Why would both be needed if he only rode one into Jerusalem? Well, at that time, and not surprisingly, the colt was very young and attached to his mother and vice versa. They would travel together, mother and offspring naturally would, among the many travels and days ahead. Jesus rode the donkey up the steep and rocky roads to the city gates and the simple colt and young colt himself into the city that beautiful city of Jerusalem. I have been privileged to travel to Israel and spend a number of days in Jerusalem. I am drawn to the words of Eli Wiesel in A Beggar in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the face visible yet hidden, 
the sap and the blood of all that makes us live or renounce life, the spark flashing in the darkness, the murmur rustling through the shouts of happiness and joy, Jerusalem, a name, a secret for the exiled, a prayer, for all others, a promise, Jerusalem, 17 times destroyed yet never erased, the symbol of survival, Jerusalem, the city which miraculously transforms people into pilgrims. No one can enter it and go away unchanged. My hope and prayer for you, dear friends, is that as you walk this difficult journey with Jesus this week, you will be changed and you might allow God to use this terrible time to remind you that we are all God's children and disciples of Jesus and to remind us what's truly important. I came across a beautiful idea of solidarity while we are at a distance. The missionaries of the Holy Spirit posted it on Facebook, and here it is. What if this Sunday, April 5th in the morning, everyone places a branch on the door of their house or on their window to celebrate Palm Sunday? It could be any green branch you can get. This would help, despite the social distancing, to be connected as we enter this holiest of weeks. We may be physically isolated, but we are not separated. We are united as the body of Christ. We are the church. Let's join together with these closing thoughts and benediction. And so it begins, we walk through this week. From palms now to passion, it's Jesus we seek. Each moment we walk through these days now with Jesus, it's time to see people the way Jesus sees us. To watch for the ones who need hope, who need kindness, seeing the light, not the darkness that blinds us. As you walk through these days, may the love you now know be spread to each person you meet at a distance on the go. And may God, who now blesses us and keeps us in love, whose face shines upon us with grace from above, who looks on us with such joy and such favor, this God three in one give us peace, life to savor. Amen. My friends, stay safe. Keep in touch. Call if you need anything. Keep the faith. Easter is coming. May God bless us all. Amen.